Gaston. All right, we're going to go politics again, and I'm going to go and I'm going to set the stage. And I want your just straight up opinion on this because it's scary. We've talked about the judiciary. We've talked about how the judicial system ha is a little bit scary when it leans towards a political party. We've talked about, was it Hamilton that said it? Hamilton on the, when the bias goes to one party, it's, it uh, kind of infringes on liberty. Yeah. We have quite a few million, uh, many, many millions of Americans right now that feel like there's a big or a lean towards um, the left when it comes to the judicial system. Um, I would disagree when it comes to the Supreme Court um, currently, that that's not really the case. However, the Supreme Court hears a fraction, comprises very little of our, 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 our real judicial system. Correct. I mean, you're in the Supreme Court. You're, if you're, when's the last time you've quoted a Supreme Court case? No, I rarely. Yeah, and my, you're I'm, in Fed court. Yeah. And I'm in the yeah, Ninth Circuit mostly. So, right. And, and so it, it's like, all right, take that aside for a minute. The Supreme Court not diminishing its importance. Not at all. Take that aside. The judicial system is seemingly to millions and millions of people out there leaning one way. And I, I think to put this in perspective, the Biden thing that happened a while back, which was really, really, really interesting that a judge um, read the plea agreement and said, whoa, 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 whoa. What is this plea agreement all about? Back when he was about to plea to the gun charge and uh, I believe it was some tax stuff. And it, basically it wrapped everything into one misdemeanor plea agreement and away they went, and the judge kind of said, uh, this doesn't look right, and questioned it, and it just so happened to go public. And, okay, that judge got that right, because that was two sides, a defense attorney yeah, and also yeah. the state. Agreeing on something. Yeah, and, and I believe that was over there in Delaware. And so you had the state of Delaware agreeing on something, but then there was, come to find out, a federal push to get this thing through. That's kind of frowned upon. And not a whole lot of people have friends in low places, I guess. But I'm getting somewhere. And, I, and, I, you're, <laughs> and you're really good at bringing it all around. So we've got a lot of people thinking, well, hold on, okay. And now Biden is, you know, going through whatever he's going through. And we'll see how that turns out. Um, Trump is fighting $4 billion and 76 cases yeah. Yeah, of all sorts of charges. And the reality with Trump is if he wasn't Donald Trump running for president, um, Andrew Cuomo said on Bill Maher, there's no way he would be charged with any of these things ever if he wasn't Donald Trump. And so that, to me, that's an interesting source because he was an AG in New York. So it's not like he doesn't know what he's talking about to right. some degree. It's not like he's some novice. I found that, and Cuomo wasn't exactly high on my character list, but, and I don't think Trump's probably high on his. All right. So, okay. Here we sit. We're driving, me and you, in this here country of ours. And we're in Arizona country, and we're just driving. And we're looking at an oligarchy, that is what we're looking at in our country and what has been developing underneath our noses for many years, but been rapidly progressing the last 10, 15. And I say that because the, I'm looking at this and I'm not a big believer in the bones. Like they go to these secret conclaves and they have these secret rituals and drink um blood uh blood of a of, of, of a mosquito that was milked anyway i don't believe that that's now there's probably plenty of folks um folks of means people of significant means go to the same schools um go to the same you know kind of belong to the same country clubs kind of belong to the same 
you know, know the same senators and Congress folks. And so if we look at like a godfather type structure and the way that they were looking at the world after prohibition, the next, the next step up for them, powerful, what power wise was government. That was just the next step up with organized crime was government. We've been trying to buy these guys off and we were, we've been able to do so at a very good, you know, pretty, pretty regular basis. Why not be them? And so this oligarchy doesn't care so much, in my opinion, about who's in charge as long as there's a mess going on. In the last 10, 15 years, we've seen the minute somebody is of significant means and they don't say or do the right thing or they don't do the they, they, they don't mm, lean the right way politically speaking, this target appears on their back. And I'm wondering how, why is that? Why, why do we have, and here's where we bring you into this. Why do we have an Elon Musk that seems to have this habitual target on his back and brushes it off very well, but you've got a Mark Cuban who used to be a crazy train, interestingly defiant MBA owner and very wealthy man kind of singing along with Barbara Streisand nowadays, if you know where I'm going with this. And that wasn't his persona 10 seconds ago. Uh, a few, uh, some years ago anyway. So I'm kind of starting to see that it appears that there's this these pods of power, which are known as oligarchies everywhere else. So what makes where we're going any different than what we're looking at with the CCP or any different than what we're looking at with Russia or any different than what we're looking at with Saudi Arabia or any different than what we're looking at with Iran or any different than we're looking at elsewhere. I mean, who the hell knows what England is? I don't even think they know who they are. If you guys, the scores of people want to tell me what England is, I would love to know because they have a parliament, but I don't even know what that means because they got a parliament and they wear wigs. That's kind of cool. I mean, I would be kind of cool. I'd be honest. That'd be cool. Do you see the same thing I'm seeing? Or am I just, you know, I had a client the other day that came in with a Wyoska issue. And so maybe, maybe I should go try what he's trying. I don't know. See, see the future, see the past. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know quite how to, to analyze that it, and because I, I struggle a little bit with conspiracy theory in, in that sense and, and whether this is a conspiracy theory of where the power is coming from. Is it being backed by crime? Is it being backed by, yeah, power in, in whether it be Elon Musk or, or, or Mark Zuckerberg or whatever, whatever, where whoever's putting money in the pockets of politicians and whatever right. else. I think that absolutely exists. Yeah. Um, so do we, do we have that tendency in the United States to money speaks? Absolutely. And it's become worse because lobbyists, right? And so now because organizations are advocating with billions, millions and billions of dollars to a certain, um, viewpoint or a, or, a, or a certain change in law or whatever they want to get accomplished and they're pumping so much money into it. We know that our politics are heavily influenced by money now and that's yeah. why campaign finance law exists, whether it's being obeyed or not. Right. Um, so I, I absolutely believe that there are things that are influencing it. I struggle just because, I mean, COVID really jaded me to the conspiracy stuff. Yeah. And everybody had now, no, nobody believed in anything anymore. Right. Um, and I think on both sides that you're correct to question everything now. Um, I don't, but because there was so much information being spewed out and we've talked about this prior, the, the headlines being spewed out of, of so much different things that I, I sometimes f struggle grasping onto, okay, Mark, Mark Cuban or President Trump or whoever we're talking about that is heavily influenced by money and power is being influenced by somebody else. Probably is happening. 
Um, maybe it's my brain that doesn't want me to convince myself that that's happening. But I, I think that there's been definitely a, a transition in the last 50 years politically and in, in, in how much money is being pumped into politics, like you said, where there is a centralization of power. And now it's no longer, it used to be, I think part of maybe where you're coming from is it used to be maybe that the conservative side leaned into the wealthy side of things because tax savings yeah. and, and capitalism and whatever else. And now you have some of these power sources that are major monies are on the other side of things. Right. And I think that, and like even your Mark Cuban example, I think that comes from, and maybe this is where it's different from Russia. Um, I don't think the Russian oligarchs are influenced by their people at all. I don't either. I think they're quiet. They're quiet and, and, and they don't, don't care. They like are. they're they're in power and right. and they're gonna right. grease the pockets of whoever they want, whether the people want them to do that or not. I think the difference in the United States is I still somewhat feel that we're we are a, a government of the people, but the people are putting social pressures on these guys with power. Right. So I, whether Mark Cuban believes in what his rhetoric is, I don't know that I fully believe that. I don't know that he's not still conservative thinking. And same with Mark Zuckerberg and some of these guys, maybe. Yeah. But these social pressures of their their PR and their brand and what they're you know what they make their money on tends to influence how they need to come out and how they need to view the world a little bit. Um, I'd hope that maybe their their view was not changed whether they had a dollar in their pocket or not, but I tend to think no. Um, so I suppose there's this. You've been practicing law, and I practiced law for a couple of decades, at least as many years as we have listeners. And, you know, having been in management, you reflect back, you look back a little bit. Now, you're fortunate in that you look, you've always looked back quite a bit um, in your own practice and drilled down where those, where those drills need to go. I mean, that's, that's, I think that's brilliant. The way you run things at Westover uh, Law Firm is, is immaculate. I love that. And so I'm wearing just that hat. Just the, the management, management hat. Right? Yeah. And I'm looking at, okay, wait a minute. How much maritime law have you ever done? And law school. Yeah. <laughs> no, I may, maybe on a cruise ship, I looked it up or something. Yeah, no, nothing. Right. And, and so I'm over here thinking, all right, we've got these maritime laws, but, but where are they? Yeah. Like, where are they enforced? Um, why are they even there? They, they're like this cloud that maybe you see it, maybe you don't. I don't even know. It's like a smoke ring in the dark. I don't know what maritime law is other than it basically seems like slang to me as no law. So you have this pirate, like who's going to hold the pirate to account? Um, this is an interesting thing to me. And th yeah. this was a real problem in the world once upon a time. No, no, and that's why I said on a cruise ship, because, you know, sometimes international waters used to feel, oh, what do you, what can you get? What, what can ha actually happen out here? Yeah, right? What, and, and, and your answer is it happened for th thousands of years. I mean, the Vikings, you sure. got Vikings, they had horns, you know? Okay. I have a point with all this. You've got Biden and he's a vice president. And he's over in the Ukraine, and we just so happen to magically be in a, a kind of a squirmish or at least part of something going on there. Everybody knows about the Ukraine thing, um, the war with Russia and all that jazz. And we've got Russia buddying up with CCP or Russia. And now all of a sudden, North Korea is showing some interest, and we've got an Iran link. And this is not looking good for the home team, because if we just rewind a little bit of time, this is exactly how World War II started. And very unlikely bedfellows started to become bedfellows. I mean, we had Mussolini. Yeah, Italy, and, Germany, and right, Russia. And, and, and then we get Japan at some point. I mean, it's a very strange bedfellow with the Japan piece. I, I find that strange. Okay. And here we are looking at kind of a similar, okay, this is going on. But what began all this, we've been talking about this, it's very distasteful for me to see anybody in office um, bragging about, well, I told that son of a, you know, 
they weren't going to get a billion dollars if this prosecutor that we don't like isn't fired. So we're going to give you conditionally money for what reason? I still don't know why we're giving them a billion dollars at this time. And, but the condition would have been, I just yank, you know, you, you I'm not going to give it to you if this is, if, if this guy's going to continue to prosecute. And then eerily a few years later, his son just so happens to be on the board of the business that that prosecutor was was going after. Interesting. Okay. And that's a billion dollars. That's like not chump change. Yeah. Okay. So that went in my mind beyond pork. And so for our audience, would you explain pork? Um... Really good, yeah. <laughs> barbecue, and and barbecue. I mean, the, we synonymously put pork and fat together, right? And and so it's, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of brain fogging. I mean, what what would it's all be, good. You, the the money yeah. that's right? I mean, what's lacing the the whole what, ways of what's Congress greasing and, what's right. greasing the, the pockets pork. of everybody to make decisions? Um, yeah, I, we call that pork. And so you have a bill. And the bill is written, and there's a bunch of little little side notes in the bill, and those bills that go to benefit a special interest right. that paid for that line or that are, two. That are hidden in the... That's called pork. Deep recesses of the bill. Right. Which you brought up, we had an opportunity, and Trump said no to the immigration bill that was in front of everybody once upon a time. And thank the good Lord Jesus, he did it because it had more pork in it than it had substance. And the problem is, is we have to live with the pork beyond the substance. Yeah. So it would have only done so much for the border, which we desperately need anything done. I get that. But it would have only gone so far for the border. And then, but it was further for Ukraine. It goes further for a lot of special interests that are built in there. And in my lifetime, until recently, until COVID, really, I haven't seen twenty four hundred page bills. No, no, that's no, that is you. You hit nail on the head with. I mean, we've talked a couple of things about the way to clean up politics, whether it's term limits or whatever else. But this is that is a major problem. The way that we draft bills, but we're not actually trying to accomplish. I mean, we are. I mean, you put the headline out there: "This is an immigration bill," or "This right. is a, a border security bill," or "Or a defense bill," or whatever it is. But you hide so much in that bill that you're trying to get, yeah, that there, that's pork, that's fat, that's, you know, personal benefit of the senator or his state or whatever else. And then, and and that delays and ultimately most of it's not getting done anymore. It's and if gotten it out is, of control. Yeah. And if it is, then we've, we're spending money on things that had nothing to do. And, right. and, and then it becomes frustrating as a people because we're just seeing, okay, why did an immigration bill pass? We blame our politicians, but- it could have been that they voted on it because it completely, you know, decimated uh, an organization or a department within their own state or whatever else because of all the crap. Well, that's there was in a it. Texas issue in it uh, that that much I know, but I'm conflicted with Texas right now. I'm, I'm you. Thank that. you, Jesse. Uh, you brought this to my attention. <laughs> I'm a little conflicted with Texas. Texas has always been their own animal. I'm conflicted. That's all I have to say about that. Um, we don't want to lose our two Texas, Texas listeners. Yeah. We have two of them. All right. I, I don't know if they're Longhorns or Aggies, but we have two of them. Doesn't matter. Let's carry on. My point is, is now the scary statement. Now this is where it gets scary. Because following the money seems to be an obvious, just follow the money. Follow the money. And that will take you to the source. That will take you to, yeah, you know, what we, where we need to focus in on fixing we need to deal with that, follow the money. But I feel like in the system that America's set up on, the way we're set up with our Constitution, and which is an amazing document, a very profound thing, and I swore allegiance to it and still do. Love that document. Okay. What if we're at a spot now where money 
isn't what we follow anymore. Like it's not money now that we have to follow. It's influence. What if that's where we're at? Because are you saying that that influence is not money anymore? I mean, it is influence for right. sure. It, it is. But I'm are you saying, saying what that if it's, it's not, not money? Monetarily right. backed. Yeah. What if what if it's not money? What if it's a mixture of some, but not really all money anymore? That that, that makes us complicated sure. because we're not Russia anymore. Then Russia is very simple now. Follow the money, and you'll know who's pulling those strings. China is very simple now. Follow the money. And sure, everybody wants to say it's, it, it, you know, it's the emperor there or whatever he's going by nowadays. But the reality is it's not. It's the major money components of that country. And there's not very many of them. In America, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, well, let's go 50 years ago, there were 12 to 15 major oil companies. There are two now. Okay, there were many, many different insurance companies. There are very few now. There are very many, many, many different this is, that's the other that are just everything seemingly consolidating. One's eating another. They call it this. They call it that, whatever. They're all eating each other. And this, and since Obama, which we did discuss last year, last uh last uh week. pod yeah last week it's recent watch it all 15 of you beautiful people watch it anyway it's interesting ever since Obama came on board um the federal government has increased but what has decreased is that middle class and it's been hunted and it's been hunted i mean aggressively and it's diminishing and diminishing and diminishing and diminishing to where life as you and I grew up and as you and I know it does not exist anymore. And we don't have, it doesn't look that different than an oligarchy, but it is a little bit because it's this influence thing. It's this Mark Cuban's doing things because he doesn't want to look bad to where people put, you know, pay um, you know, the rent to, for his, you know, big, big arena there. And they keep purchasing tickets and sneakers and, and, and all sorts of whatever else he's involved with. But then you've got this old, I think it's McCleary O'Cleary. I, I, I don't watch the shark tank. Oh, um, Kevin O'Leary, that guy, he seems pretty sharp and he was no Trump supporter at all. And he's like, there goes the neighborhood. We talked about that last week. There goes the neighborhood. Nobody was going to want to do business in New York, period, end of story. All of us fellas that have kind of a lot, we're gone. We're going to be, you're going to be finding us in Tennessee now. And, and I don't think he was kidding. And what does that do now to your middle class of New York that pays incredible rent a lot of rent. Uh, the whole downtown New York scene is quite the attraction. Now, what? Where does this take New York when you pull most, or if not many, of those interests in there? What happens? Yeah, we've seen that with. I mean, that's been trending that direction for a while, right? I mean, your arguments of. I mean, you you bring up New York, but I mean, you could even take the exact polar opposite and go small town America. And there's been, you know, quite the rumblings for years that the Ma and Pa owned shops, you know, get eaten up by the Walmarts and whatever yeah. else that come into town. And Which was a Republican part issue back in the day. Right. And so, so, I mean, on both sides of it, we've got that going on. Um, I'm sure that's not great for our, it's. I know it's not great for our middle class, uh, for our economy in general. I don't know if it's great to have the WalMarts come in. Probably not. Um, I think the more that you can keep that entrepreneurial spirit and more that can start their own businesses and and succeed, like you and I have been able to do, I think the more. Yeah, I was just going to say, that. let's do a shameless self promotion yeah, right here. I mean, How many cases do you take on? In a week, just take a just a shot in the dark. How many cases do you take over from a big immigration mill? 
a big, a big, big firm. Yeah, a bigger, smaller, whatever. I mean, probably from a bigger firm. I don't know, a couple cases a week, and so if you translate that into you know ten cases a month and one hundred. 200 200 cases a year yeah. on the big firm. We've got Raffi next door. I've got Phillips across the street. Yeah, I've got, got the bird that we like to give the bird to. It's trying their level best, but you know, Tweety just doesn't do it. Um, we've got the learner road guys are kind of funny because they at least they dress tough. I I picture them as the the jerky boys. Do you remember them? Yeah, I, I I introduced them to my wife it's the a other weightlifting day. Weightlifting commercial, not a. <laughs> They're PI like meatheads, firm. right? They're like meatheads and you're like, but the beauty uh, is when you run into them, because I've ran into them one time, only one time, you might run over them. I mean, your son, he's six, five. Oh, they're short. They might not go to his knee. Okay. So anyway, do we take over those guys all the time? Why? No, for me, it's always, you know, the, the factory and, and that's the tough part about like, so for the, for the legal side of things, maybe it's a little bit easier but on the Walmart side of things, I mean, even I, am I, am I going to go to Ma and Pa's shop that I'm going to pay five bucks for a loaf of bread or am I going to pay $2? And because groceries are so expensive, I'm going to go to Walmart and pay right. $2. And that's right. what sucks. For me, the reason I'm able to take over the big firms is because they want to see a face to the to the case, which I provide. Right. As a, and they don't get that at the big firm. Right. They want to see personal service. Oftentimes, I can undercut the prices of the big firm, which is opposite from maybe the right. Walmart argument. Um, so I, I think there's still value. Hopefully, I can hold on to that value, what you and I have started to create or have created. Um, there are a lot of people. I have billion-dollar companies that hire me that should probably be at the big firms, but like that small atmosphere like that they can talk to me whenever they want whatever else and so that's how i built my but business i just don't know if that translates to i think everyone. what translates here's what i think translates and i, th I think i'm on to something and you are too i think we're on the we're, we're on the scent so what it translates to is you know their name and you know their case your staff knows their name sure your staff knows their case they are uh, communicated with they are um e even hard things and celebrated with with good things and so they're family right and so right. that's why you go to that mom and pa shop is in the same way and and the only I, I and i encourage people and i try to do the best i can when i find something even if it costs me a, a few more cents to go to there because even that small shop in that small town is it's family right they come in and they hey dana how are you doing and you want your yeah. bread today you want right. that that's that's a cool yeah. feeling that's how america felt back in the day right that's yeah. what you wanted right it, it definitely is we are way more corporate america than we were before right and um i don't think it's it's going to be impossible to reverse right. at this point agree um but i hope there's enough entrepreneurial spirit and there's enough and i think what ends up having to to happen is that the government like you said is so huge right now if, if they can stop filtering so much money into these Walmart's pockets and whatever else and get incentives to those to start their own businesses again. And, right. and maybe that's where the government can be influencing um, so that we can start to build up middle America again would be awesome. I just don't know. Well, I, I haven't heard a great plan for it. We'll see. I, I believe that that's where we were going under Trump. I think, that's, I think that I there think was, that's, there was some inroads into that. There was sure. some certain, um, yes. Uh, and I don't know exactly how he was doing it, as quickly as he was able to do it too, because if once he took the reins from Obama, Obama, uh, the things were not going well economically at that point. Correct. And things started to go very well economically very quickly. And it seemed like the middle class and, and I'm always very interested in that because it's kind of like what I watch where they live, what they drive, kind of their patterns and how they move a little bit. And it's like, uh, okay, uh, middle class is starting to make a run. Now it looks a little different what they're doing for it. Um, but yeah, I still even, and, and it wasn't Trump's fault or what he was pushing, but I even think even during that time of Trump's economic, you know, success, a lot of that middle-class America money was still tied to corporate America. I agree. It was and still I, high. I, I, I agree. The money was still being consolidated. Yep. Um, it just that because the money was being consolidated, costs were down of things, and that's where we're at a problem right now. Is that we're we're 
we're consolidating and keeping prices high. So right now the it's double dipping. Right, right it's really America. really they're, they're not being able to charge. Good. Right, they can charge what they want. The bread's still not making cheaper. the exact same. Right, the bread's of money. not that much cheaper at the Walmart now. Yeah. That's where we were with Trump. Is I feel like that we were still consolidating. We were still the power was still shifting higher up, whether he was wanting it to or not. That was just the way the nature of the the way the United States was going. But we were able to keep the cost down, and middle class America was investing in these big companies that were making hand over foot, and so they were making money right. on those. And so there, there was a the stock market was flying yeah. and, and whatever else, and so. Yeah, but I but I think that the at least he had a focus on trying to do that. I I think Biden's perception of what middle class America is 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 different too. Like what he wants to categorize that as. Um, it, it, I think he wants it to succeed. Yeah. But I don't think he I don't, I don't know what his standard is for what he what defines success it. means. Yeah, and what that success yeah. is. So. Well, it could be driving a truck cuz he's done that or riding rail, he's done that or saving lives. Anywhere he goes, he saves lives. My point is, is I, I think it's interesting. I started out with Cuban and then Elon Musk, and then you've got Zuck in there, and you've got some of these individuals that have uh, kind of like The Rock. You know what's is, funny about all those people you just mentioned? What you got? Well, maybe not Elon Musk. I was just thinking the social influence. Yeah. And even Elon Musk. Oh, no, he owns Twitter. So yeah, absolutely he not. Owns the so, so it, it all fits in there. All, all four guys in. that you mentioned are media. major social Social influence. Yeah. Ag agree. It's kind of like, I, look, I said- It's no there, longer the, 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 sorry to interrupt, but it's no longer no. the, the Paul Allen that you never heard from. Right. But, but had billions of dollars, but he owned the Seahawks and that's all I knew about him. Right. Um, now all these guys are very, very socially active. Very, influ very influential. Jerry Jones and very has, influence. has a platform. Sure. So on and so forth. It's so interesting because he's going through something right now and he's making some prints. It's so interesting to me. So we're looking at this and we're going, okay, um, these guys all have, in my opinion, targets on their back. And I think, and I'm going to relate this to somebody I don't, I, okay, I believe that that target was on Andrew Cuomo's back. And Andrew Cuomo kind of did the Goldberg and Osborne, they gave it the bird which never works with Goldberg and Osborne, but it doesn't work for anybody. He gave it the bird and down he went. Down he went. Like he was literally up for potentially 2020 president election. I mean, he was kind of the front run, the favorite. But old school, a little bit too old school. Wasn't willing to go bend enough one way or the other. And so all of a sudden he finds himself, and I'm not saying rightfully or wrongfully so, I just finds himself in a just a deep ditch real quick. Okay, so that, that target is on these guys' backs. And so I believe that that's why we're not seeing the renegade, um, what's his dink? Ruben. Uh, we're, Cuban. Cuban. We're not seeing the Cuban out there doing what he doing used to do. What he do. We're not seeing it because that he feels that target cancel culture and right. He can lose his whole entire. I mean, people have right. lost their entire livelihoods because so of something. They he said. can grow a pair of balls and Mark Cuban. I hope he's one of the 10 people to watch this thing. He can grow a pair and become kind of like Dana White. Who's much larger than Cuban ever will be physically. Well, possibly, <laughs> possibly. I, I think, I, I think, think so. he, I think he, I wouldn't mess with that guy. No. I don't think. Oh yeah. Her dad's a super stud and can kill somebody with his pinky. Okay. I'll remember that. I remember it all the time. Okay. Cause I'm, I mean, I, I'm like scared. That was the, yeah. anyway, my point is, is Dana White is very out there, very outspoken and very, just, and there is no target on him. Everybody knows what they have with him. I think yeah, that that's Mark, kind of a Musk type and, and move Mark too. And Cuban's a different, that's a different one because, you know, you could say you use Trump and Dana White interchangeably in the sense that, you know, Trump continued to do kind of what he did. He was outspoken. Yeah. He was bold. He was sometimes crude. He was some whatever. Yeah. And, and kind of unapologetic for that, whether you like him or not. And Mark was that way. And, and it's, it's, that's an interesting social study to know why, 
Because if he made his money that way, I, right. and I know it is different right now. Because I don't it, know it, anybody more fined than that dude once upon a time. Be, because certain people have survived. Dana White survived some controversies on things yeah. he said. Trump survived controversies. Some haven't survived. Um, I know there's lines in the sand of, of certain things that you can and can't do to absolutely get you canceled. I, I don't know why Mark... Yeah, his personality has changed so much. That's an interesting one. Mark Zuckerberg was always kind of right. on the liberal That's side. That's why of I didn't things. bring him up because I can't put a finger on the pulse. Yeah, of. he's always been on that side of things. Uh, Elon's not even technically born in this country, so he's a hard one too because he's influenced a little bit. I mean, he's a U.S. citizen now, but um, you know, he is interesting because, but but he's very straight up. No, I, I don't mind. Elon. And I dig the way he kind of rolls that way. He's very straight up, but at the end of the day. You just like take anything you want. Yeah. No, hey, oh, hey, board, are you going to vote to give me my, you know, zillion, uh, billions of dollars that you owe me? Whatever. Yeah. Y you know what I mean? It's like interesting to watch his, he's got a Dana White type, uh, type approach to things. But, but I, I do think in, in the point of all of this, I think the one thing that you're, you're putting a, a nail on and, and, and making a good point that I didn't maybe even think about is how, <laughs> How so? I think the oligarchy may have always existed in the shadows. Yeah, but it's come out of the shadows. That's I think the biggest thing right, right now is, is that, like I said, that the billionaires and millionaires you had to look them up on Forbes list before to know who they were, right? right. And to know what they did, and they were probably maybe they were influencing, probably. Oh sure. Um, sure. But maybe a little bit differently, and and even you know back to the founding fathers and you know whatever their networks and organizations that they had. Most of those guys were fairly wealthy people and Jefferson's and right. Washington's and Franklin's and whatever else. So it's, it's, I'm sure it's always exists because when you have money, you have power and when you have power, you have influence and you have right. people around you. And that, that's just the nature of things. I think the difference right now is how much more they can influence people or how much more people can influence them on the other hand, because they're so ouches, they're making social stands, which I think before, I think the fear of these millionaires and billionaires is don't say anything because we don't want to jeopardize the brand. We don't want to jeopardize. And right. Not, they don't seem to be that way anymore, even no. though it can happen. Right. There, there's probably quiet money still, but it, it's definitely getting louder. It's louder money for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's, it's definitely getting louder. And so now we're, we're over here thinking, okay, how do we get our middle class? How do we get our voices back? How do we get our country back on track from... Maybe kind of just, I, I want to call it an adulterated oligarchy. It's adulterated. It's not just a handful of people pulling some strings in this arena or that arena or whatever, the way other countries in our world roll, uh, other superpowers actually. But we're kind of got an adulterated, it's not an oligarchy, but it's, it's something. I mean, there's, there's. I mean, and it's so let's even I can bring it back to the immigration side of things and, and on this topic. So Trump last week makes kind of waves, which I appreciate because I actually agree with what he's kind of. I mean, I don't know how the implementation was, but he comes out with this all of a sudden pro immigration stance. Right. Of, um, you know, I want to I want to give green cards to anybody yeah. that graduates from a U.S. university, whether yeah. it be an and he was really liberal with it. Associate's degree, bachelor's degree, technical school. Give him a green card automatically. That was I was like. Wow. And I, and I like that in the sense that at least it's some thought of what to do with the people here. And the, and the thought obviously is, is let's get the brightest and, and, and whatever else, the best people the that are willing to, to work and, and grow. And, and, and sure. I, I think there's, I think Trump loses sight a little bit on the immigration side that there's also a backbone of the labor side of things right. that makes those companies work right. that we still need to take care of. But, but let, point another point for another day. But the interesting thing to me was that that's the first time anybody had heard about it. I think his own staff was a little bit surprised that he yep. went and said it because they had to backtrack a little bit or backpedal. And even some have come out and I don't know that he can implement this, blah, blah, blah. But you, you know how where he said that? Do you know who he was sitting with? Um, no. So, and I can't pronounce his name, but he's sitting with the Golden State Warriors owner. Oh. Chamath. Where, yeah, yeah, where, no, it's yeah. an Indian name. Yeah. I've never, he's from India, I believe. Or, yeah. uh, Originally, he's a U.S. citizen, I yeah. think, but his parents are. And yeah, he owns the Golden State Warriors. He He's very he's very on the on the tech side of things. He's very influential. Um, tons of companies and whatever else. And he was making the point that, hey, we're having to outsource all of our stuff. And so throw us a ball like here. Can we, can we get some him. people? Yeah, can we get right. some people here? Why are we having to... 
educate some of our interns or our H1B people. And then we got to send them out. And why are these people starting? And he's like, look, I have lots of competitors now that are starting their companies outside of the United States after they graduate here, which we could have kept here if we would have kept them. So his point was well taken. I understand that point. I, I was interested to see that Trump was, and we're going back to this topic, influenced by that money mm-hmm. that's sitting in front of him. Yeah. Very, and, and I don't know where he politically leans. I thought he, I mean, he might be a Trump supporter. That's why he probably had him on the podcast. But Trump's not usually one to go on to somebody's right. podcast that doesn't that, support that's him. That's actually not true. He'll go in. Uh, maybe. I, no, uh, Trump likes to hear I think Trump. on a podcast type yeah. of situation, maybe not. But yeah, not, not that Trump he's afraid just likes of anything. Trump Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, there is that. But but I maybe I don't know maybe they can listeners can correct me I think he may be a Trump supporter but was hey asking for some help on the immigration side of things but it was interesting that it was never been talked about before never been announced but he was sitting in front of somebody with with influence and money yeah. and all of a sudden there's maybe a new proposal that comes out well, so I will back that I will I will I'm not going to counter it I th- I find that interesting but I will say this. Did we hear about any effort whatsoever in the Middle East as far as the Abrahamic Accords went? Did we hear about anything prior to them being done? No, and and yeah, so is there back channels to to everything? Is there things? And, and it takes time for things to... Yeah, it's just I, I an find, interesting announcement to do it Trump at that point. I Trump an interesting study because I don't think that he holds his cards close to his vest on purpose. In fact, if he had his way, they'd all be on the table And all I the think time. that's probably what happened. Right. But what happens is, is he gets in the middle of doing, doing, doing mode and going mode, and he's just kind of talking along the way. He's not very political in the no, sense of, just, yeah. Right. Not diplomatic. Yeah. He's just talking along the way, talking along the way. And I'm not trying to say that's a great way to be or anything, but he's just kind of a doer and he's just kind of talking along. Oh, by the way, we got these Abrahamic Accords. Isn't that great? I've got these military folks that were injured or you know, experience something, I'm going to be gone for a minute and a half and no one ever hears about that. And I got this and I got that. And I, okay. He's a different animal as far as the way he rolls. <laughs> he's got to be so hard to, and, and I laugh, not, this guy? isn't a criticism. He's got to be so hard to be, to you to be on staff of his or be his whatever guy, PR guy, or, or one of his executive staff. It's an impossible try. job. It, it would be so funny. Cause it's like the boss that just stands up and he hasn't even asked the board of directors whether he can give raises to everyone, but he's feeling real good about right. himself. He's like, ah, we're having, you know, this, right. this. And they're going in the background going, where are we going to get this money? Right. Where are we going to get this? Yeah, exactly. He, see, um, he just said what? Yeah, exactly. Where? <laughs> and I appreciate, but I mean, I mean, to his credit, that means at least he, he has that desire to get things done, which right. we're not always seeing with politicians. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I think that the Golden State Warrior guy um, and his relationship to Trump Um, would it, could it be a good thing? Is money sometimes used for good purposes? Sure. Uh, And it may not have been a money decision at all. I didn't mean to indicate that, but it was an influential, I mean, he was an influential person that, that is in that arena and it, an announcement like that or some broad pivot from what, cause it's a pivot. Like he, he wanted to give nothing on immigration. There was never any positive of, Hey, right. we're going to do this. It was always, you know, enforcement, enforcement, enforcement. And this was actually I, I a program that could be, it seems like there was a better way to roll that out. Absolutely. If he was do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So just the fact let's, that let's just kind of podcast. Hey, we need to really think about out. what are we going to do with all these folks that are here, um, undocumented that have been here for years and years and years and years. What are we going to do? And his was such a jump. Like most people would be like, Hey, we need to extend the work permits or open this up to anything. He's like, give them green cards, like which is the end Let's result, go, right? right? Which, with the last proposal, even on the on the Democratic side of things, the, the Gang of Eight, right? That was a fourteen year process or an eight year of eight, paying taxes was, and good moral character yeah. and whatever else. This but was they, graduated boom, from a two year university or a two year tech school and yeah, give them go. a green card. Yeah. I mean, I like that. I be, love the idea, and if they're while in the university. Who knows what that looks like? Yeah, no, it's just and procedurally, it's just like, but Trump diarrhea. Of the mouth once again, sometimes. yes. Here we go once again. We got the Trump with the target on his back, and he's saying, "I've got it on my back to keep it off everybody else's." That's kind of what his claim to fame is. And okay, let's just take it. Let's just pretend in this fairy world that that's so. Okay, and I think to a degree that probably is so in his mind. It is dang so. Okay. That much I'll, I'll totally yeah. go out on a limb and say, yeah, in his mind, that is very so. Okay. And he has lost a lot 
um, personally by being in public there, office. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. All right. He's been ripping on the illegal crossing and that their best aren't coming over. Um, we have rapists and killers and drug warlords and cartels, and he's not wrong. No, and I think he was less right before, but he's definitely right now, right. probably. I mean, not even conspiracy theorists, right. just the, the, the liberal way that we, in the last year, and it stopped. Just right. so you know, it, it has, on my end, I can tell you. It's trickled down it, quite a bit. There's been executive orders that have curbed it, and there's been some things but it, way too late. I, I don't know why. It, yeah, I don't know why it took this long and, and whatever. It's election zoning. season, and all of a sudden, well, there's some zoning. things that come out. It's zoning. Whatever. I don't know what it is either. But he wasn't, I mean, he may not have been as, I mean, sure there was trickling in, but the asylum, the border wasn't open before, right? It was just right. people were sneaking across and, and. Old school. Yeah, old school. The same thing that we've been listening or that we've been dealing with for 30 years. Right. Um, but they I don't. swim and such. Yeah. I, I don't think we had this. We'll see what the future holds because I don't, even though Trump said that the worst are coming over. In the reality of things, yes, you got a news story once a year of illegal immigrant ra rapes and kills right. and whatever else, but so did 50,000 other people that weren't illegal. And so, yeah, yes, it's not ideal, but it probably, but we'll see what the future holds because right. what has happened and the the amount of people that are poured in right now, mm -hmm. it, that so number no is likely knowing. to increase. Right. There's no way of knowing because, look, some of the best people we represent on the planet, hardworking Folks, yes, they end up getting into a trouble here and there, a scream out, um, uh, you know, whatever, yeah. DUI and, 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 and those things I don't want to diminish because certainly those can go a whole different sure. direction real no, fast. Still. So, but, but, you know, they come over here, they, they're not looking to um, destroy break laws or destroy or, hurt or, people. Or, they're not the ones spray painting on the, on the buildings downtown or burning the downtown buildings. They're not protesting. They're working. Yeah. Like they're working. And so for good or bad, however you want to put it, they are working and they're not taking your kid Scotty's place in the workforce because your kid Scotty, I'm sorry, Karen is smoking dope on your couch downstairs. And even if he's not, he's not going to be waking up at four in the morning and, and drilling a no, he's oil not. well or he's, whatever he, it is. He's too. got things on his thumbs because they're too busy <laughs> on his gaming system. Yes. I'm a little bit, discouraged with our with youth right now I, I would like to see a little bit more proactivity out of out, out of our i would like to see your your philosophy of coaching basketball be a, a global philosophy for our for our young it used to be we're trying it yeah. used to be the way the way that we all grew up was there was a little bit of a, a, a hard hand in our life um you drip dried um because mom was tired of picking up your wet towel. You have never left a towel on the floor since. Um, that's, I feel like good parenting. Yeah. Um, I, I can't wait to meet your mom because she probably put me in my place real fast and I would take it in a hot minute. Oh. I'm already scared of her and I don't know where she's yet. in town in a couple of weeks, but I'm leaving. So she's coming to babysit the kids. So. How are you going? We're uh, Caden, who's been in here before. We're taking him on a graduation. Oh, that's trip. right. You guys are going to the Iceland for you a guys couple are going days, big time. and then Normandy, France. That'll be yeah. fun. I just had a buddy get back, so apparently this is the time of year to go to which one? Iceland, Iceland. and Normandy, because uh, Tony just got back from there. Loved it. Really? He did both of those. Yes. Oh. And I found that it's an to interesting be, combination of trip. I thought that was my uh, own. And I, I think you made it up, and I think he did. Thought he was a brilliant fella for making it up to well, so what it is and here's the tip iceland air when you fly iceland air actually allows you to do a layover that is multiple days without having to pay an extra leg of a flight so we're actually flying to paris but iceland is a, and and they the way the flight works is you fly from new york to iceland and then we stay for three days in iceland as a layover and then same flight pick up from iceland to, to france so it costs half of it and you get a three-day stop in iceland so you can do it one day two day three days you're giving so, Paige way too many ideas that's a it's a fun little so anyway off she, topic, would be, but, she would be so cold and it's the trip to new york to iceland's only five hours so you end up splitting it up a little bit too because that nine and ten hour trip can be gnarly yeah 
I just oh, have to I'm be safe. part of it. Yeah. But I'll, I'll look at your pictures. That'll be fun. Because that place looks so blooming cool. We're going to scuba dive the Ooh. the canyon right there where the That'll two continents meet. Awesome. Yeah, the tectonic plates right there. So, yeah. Are you certified? So, just go sorry, yes. I shouldn't say. Well, it's kind of scuba diving. It's snorkeling more than scuba diving, but it's in dry suits, and you do dive down a little bit. But yeah, I should caveat that we're not going down forty feet. It's freezing water. I, I know. So, I'm already cold for you right now. More on the snorkeling side. It is this cold. cold. It is this cold. But the water's beautiful. I'll have to show you some pictures when we get back. It'll be awesome. I, the pictures I've seen from Tony were to die for. So I'm excited for it. It'd be awesome. Um, I feel like the louder you get and the more um, – I, I don't want to say partisan. I, I want to say known for your view. So Dana White is very much known for his view. We thought we knew Cuban for his view. And we, we come to find out we didn't. Yeah. He, he was just a kind of a ranting and raving individual. But we know – where Elon Musk stands as far as freedom of speech. He wants free speech. We know that he wants to create all sorts of industry, all sorts. I mean, his hands in a lot of things, and he doesn't apologize for it. No. We know that he likes a good work day and nobody working from home. We know that he couldn't stand the California regulations pieced out of there. And so we could look at what he does. And so as he moves along, as Trump, interestingly, moves along, and I'll focus on him in a minute, as these guys move along, but Zuck, we don't really know really a whole lot. We think he leans pretty left, uh, so we speculate. I mean, it looks that way, and and for all intents and purposes, that seems to be where the uh, money goes. Most of it. I mean, but he's, he's throwing money, not words. Like, yeah. he's he's not yeah, the he's influence. Yeah, he's not super... His wife's super quiet. He's super quiet in yeah. personality. His influence is narrowed to the money. Right. So that's old school. So yeah. th there's our oligarch. That's old school. I, I kind of almost appreciate the old school. Now we've got influence. And influence with Trump. So can you shoot Trump now? So you have the CIA of 1962. Can you shoot Trump now? You can't even shoot him. Yeah. Too. Yeah. yeah. He, you can't do it. You're risking literally a civil war. Yeah. And so he has gotten to the point where he is so influential that the target leaves his back. Oh, yeah. Now they're yeah. trying every other way they can get him legally and this, that, and the other. And by they, meaning the political bend there is really kind of unfortunate to look and watch in our country, our country, where Hamilton wrote the warning to the bias. In the 1700s. Ah. Yeah. In the 1700s. I mean, how brilliant were those men? And so my point is, is this is, to me, it's interesting, these targets that appear, but they really start to, seemingly, they're like, they're snipers. They're, they're like, wh where's Oprah? You know, wh why have we not seen Michelle Obama lately? Where's Oprah? Where's... Where are some, where's Streisand? I haven't heard. I mean, thank goodness, but That's, where are these people? We get to hear De Niro an now. For me, yeah, you must be. No. How much older are you than me? Two. two look, I'm Streisand. an old soul too. But yes, I brought up Streisand. But look at De Niro lately. But what is De Niro doing? I love that he's t talking like he's a tough guy and saying that he, that, that that Trump's a clown and that he's a pretender. And isn't yeah, that what he does for a living? Man. Like he's he's a wannabe. He's a fake tough guy. And I'm thinking to myself. If he had a splinter in his big toe, he's not going to be snorkeling where you're going to be snorkeling. Let's just put it to you that way. Okay? He's not a tough fella. So I don't understand that. But what I wanted to bring up was this influence and oligarchy and kind of put it all on one tray and go, uh, yeah, we got a problem with money and we've got this big problem with influence. And yeah, that's the, I mean, to sum it all up, I think that's the big difference with what we've got now than what we've dealt with. I think we've always dealt with money. Yes. And I think we've always dealt with influence, but not together usually. 
Hey, babes, on, on the... Intro, At least publicly on, loud. On the internet, on the intro web, can you look up Paris Hilton and when she first had a, 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 a some, when she first came on the scene, like, I don't know, her first commercial? 19... It's got to be 90s. 90, late 90s, maybe, six. or mid. <laughs> okay, I was wrong. That was when she did start to do television shows yeah, and whatever else. That's when she should have started to do I want commercials. Okay. Okay, no, I want commercials. So she she would have come onto the scene because of a controversial issue way before that, about I would think. four she or five ha- years. When, when, did, that. when did her sex tape come out? Yeah. Is what Jesse's tap dancing <laughs> around. Because <laughs> that's the first time anybody <laughs> heard about her, right? And then I think but she I mean she was she was very socially active in those circles. She was a socialite, and I think yeah. that she was on the Hilton commercials. But socialite wasn't even a thing that I, it we wasn't. knew about. I mean, right. it, it existed, she, but she unless you were in those searching circles, you didn't know about. All right. So look, the sex tape? No, it's going to be earlier than that. Oh. Yeah, that's like oh. So that's probably when it was like, she sold it, remember? To like, yeah. So that's probably when it was technically released. It was probably the controversy was a few years before that. Maybe. All right. So anyway, all I know is like I see this 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 earlier than skinny, that. blonde, with the big glasses and the big bag with a stupid a dog in the bag, going, "That's hot." And <laughs> somehow didn't even that's that. hot. But yes, I do. That's hot. And all the all of a sudden, people started saying, "That's hot." Blah 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 blah. There went the neighborhood. There went the neighborhood. Because we have too many people that are watching social whatever else is out there. And I'm trying to get, we've got this maybe oligarchy and that we've got the follow the money. We've got this, this, that. We want our country back. Stop saying that's hot. Stop thinking that having a little puppy dog because you need to or whatever else is the coolest thing in the world. Stop following the trend. Stop following all this stuff. Stop it. Look, I love shopping at Bashes. I know you're a Walmart guy. I get it. I'm not a, but, <laughs> I don't shop anywhere. <laughs> uh, but I but I do. I do go to Walmart as well. I do because they got it. They got super glue. And if I need super glue, I don't trust finding it at the Bashes. But I like to go to the local Fries grocer. Is our, uh, and you guys, you guys like to go to the local grocer Whatever it is. best you can. I go, to, I'm, I've become a farmer's market dude on Saturdays. Nice. So I'm obviously Supporting. those folks are, yeah. are rubbing off on me a little bit because I can't stand the Paris Hilton effect. I can't stand it. What, 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 what good was she to the plus positive of all of mankind? None. But now we have this influence and this influence scares Mark Cuban. This influence scares the senators. This influence scares Congress. This influence scares our judges. This influence is mighty. And it's like scary as all get because you don't even have to be worth a squirt of anything to have some influence. Yeah, it's and it's it's back to what we talked about before, right? Is is that in order to take a stand on anything, you got to have some major courage, some major huevos, like you said, because people don't just disagree with you anymore. They hate you. Right. Because we're partisan. We're on different Cancel teams. Cancel you. And yeah, so- We get hated. They, and it's not just they personally hate you. They will then make it their mission to have everyone hate you. And, and that's the, the difference nowadays is that now it's this mob mentality- of it's hysterical of, of hysteria and whatever else and so you know luckily for you and i we can sit on here and say things and and we don't i mean who knows maybe we've we had to have com- we've had hundreds of thousands of canceled. followers and we've yeah okay so we've had some can even on our small little thing we get comments going back and and yeah what people can sit behind a screen and say and wouldn't say to your face right is is, is the problem with society now um but yeah it's really hard to be courageous anymore i think we should start living together again I think we should start waving to our neighbors. I'm just saying. I'm just yeah, yeah, because when you when you talk to somebody in the face, even if they're saying something that you don't agree with, and then you kind of oh, you know what? They raise a good family, and they do. It's a lot harder to hate them, right? right. You may disagree with them, but it's sure. harder to hate them. 
but it's yeah it's real easy right now to potentially so the influence and the targets out there it's just so interesting to me i i love this topic because what i'm trying to do is get the word out where people can kind of start crawling out of their rabbit holes that they don't even know they might be in they can start you know rekindling relationships with friends going to lunch with whomever starting to say hello to bud in the hallway at the office or to um, Susie, or to Maria, or to whomever, I want to get, I I think that that's key, is to really find our culture, what we're about. You coach basketball. You develop and mold young men. Cool. Tell me more, you know what I mean? That's awesome. How do you do that? How do you beat more talented teams than yours. How do you do that? And, and and I like the way you're going about it and so on and so forth. Oh, hey, who do you recommend? I've already asked you that. You've told me a handful of folks for my 13-year-old. And so I, I appreciate that, getting to know Jesse Westover at Westover Law Firm. I mean, that and how you guys tick there. And then let's keep that going. Like, you know what I mean? Like a pay it Takes forward effort. type deal. I know, right? Takes effort. Well, I mean, it, what? Speaking of effort, you got to get to work out at lunchtime. I today I have to go to a meeting at noon. So yeah, either way, I got. Oh, you're good either good. way. Yeah. All right. Well, we're done today, but yeah. I want everybody to just start hanging out with everybody else. I like it. Uh-huh.